There's a fight. Jordan 2-2 and Kevin Bieksa. So Brian hammered him with an overhand right. Tutu responds with some left hands. Oh, Tutu, here they go. It didn't take long. He tapped Tutu two once. Can he get him again? Oh, down. Great job. Bull, BXN, and O'Brien, we searched for a link. We found that they had never fought each other, but that all three had fought Jordan Tutu. While we're searching, we also found that all three will, as a tribute to Michael Jackson next year, fight with one glove on, as opposed to Mike Camilleri, who, of course, fought with two gloves on. Oh, I did. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about Martin Havlat. Oh, I, I think you know what I'm idea. talking about. I didn't realize what you were talking about. That was yeah. a fight. Well, okay. You can each have your say. It was just a face-off, and we were just jarring. Yeah, let's find out who else is here. Okay. Unless you want to. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Or, or unless you want to punch them as we Yeah, go. no, hey. Oh, yeah, who is this guy? Across from you. That's Kevin Bieksa. He's really good. Right hand defense in Vancouver. Tell me one thing he does really well on the ice. He likes the toe drag on the blue line. you got to come out. Make sure you're not just in a shooting The league. guy to your left, Jared Bull, Jared tell me something about him. You don't want to be, you don't know he's on the ice when you're playing against him. So you've got to be aware of where yeah. is Jared Bull. Yeah. And the guy sitting across from you to the thing. left? Same thing, same thing. He'll step up on you if you cut across the middle. His name is Shane O'Brien, of yeah. course, Vancouver Canucks. Did you sign a contract today? I actually did, Did yes. you sign your Pardon contract me. in our green room today? I did. How cool is that? Where is that contract? That contract is sitting right over there. If we brought it up here, not to look at it, but could you just hold it up and say, this is my new contract? Because that's cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll get it during commercial. Okay, <laughs> so let's start off, and let's say that the four of you guys were Ottawa Senators. And let's imagine that Danny Heatley doesn't get traded. He walks into the locker room in September because they haven't been able to move him. What do you say to him? I think you say, what's going on here? I want to get to the bottom of this, and we need to hash this out because it seems like there might be more to the situation than there really is, but it doesn't look good. I think as a player, it's uh, you know, it's not really up to us to bring in players and ship them out. Like You have a guy on your team, he's your teammate, and you kind of bury the hatchet and, and move on. And you know, Shane would probably like to take him out for a beer, and I'd, <laughs> I'd probably, I'd probably yeah, agree with that. Exactly. I mean, obviously, you know, things probably happen that... Uh, you know, we all don't know. So do you agree with him? I definitely agree with him. I mean, once... Uh, now, do you, you know, agree with him only because you obviously get your hair done at the same place? Jealousy will get you nowhere in life, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, once you show up at training camp, uh, you know, he's part of the club and... Uh, now, at the know. same time, if you find out that he really did refuse this trade and he hurt the team and they couldn't go get the players they wanted... Then it's but like, we know that, Mike, well, for no, sure. we don't know everything. What don't we know? You know I mean, we know that he came out and publicly said, I want to be traded. Right. We know that that hurt the value of him, of him on the open market, right? right? Because everyone knows you got to trade him. We know that they had a trade done with names mentioned to the Edmonton Oilers, and we know that the Oilers went sat face to face with him and said, we want you, and he said, no, I don't want to go to Edmonton. I'm not saying that isn't the case, but there's, there could always be more to it than that. You yeah, never I mean, know in this business. You got to, once training camp starts and he's part of the team, you just got to... I mean, you got to bury it and just uh, worry about hockey. I mean, would it be tough cool, though? Because Chris Neal came out and said, "Look, if he doesn't want to be there, we don't want him." It'd be tough, but I mean, if uh, I mean, it's just another thing you have to get over. You don't want to be worrying about that and trying to win games and having that in the room. And I mean, yeah, it's all happens sure in Dallas. Once, uh, once he comes to camp, like I mean, obviously he'll probably want to be there. I mean, maybe deep down, but I don't know him. But I know watching watching him play and playing against him, and from what I've heard around the league, is I think he's a pretty good character guy, and I'm sure. You know, once he comes to camp and you're with the boys and, and you're, you're going at it every day, you, you want Teammates have got over bigger things than this mm -hmm. issue before and played together and played well together. What would it be like? You jump in on this because, uh, you know, I really value your opinions. That's what makes this show special when you've got four guys who play the game as opposed to four guys who played the game like 50 years ago and no one ever heard of. That's tomorrow's show. So here's my question. You're talking about getting over stuff. Donald Brashear signs with the New York Rangers. He had that really cheap shot on Blair Betts, and the Rangers were super mad. How tough is it for him to go into that dressing room? I think they're probably a lot happier they're playing with him than against him now. I mean, they probably don't want to get hit that way, and they wouldn't mind having him protect them. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it's kind of what happens on the ice, stays on the ice, even if it's cheap. I mean, I've done some things that I regret doing, but, uh, I mean, you see, you see these guys around all the time. You see them out, and most guys are pretty good off the ice, and same way. So what do you regret doing that you did? I mean, it's not like it's, it's not all of the public record. We've it's all hidden hit from behind and some stuff I said, maybe. I think Brashear's uh, his original handshakes and introductions will be a, a bit awkward, but I think, uh, you know, I've, I've certainly played with guys that I've fought afterwards, and, uh, you know, me and partner over here yeah. used to get into it quite a bit. We hated each other in the minors. We beat. Really? Yeah, we and chased then, each uh, other around. and We were roommates at the beginning of the season. We're partners now. Yeah, yeah we were uh, roommates until he punted me. Just tight. Well, he punted me. Boys, can you believe that? He punted me. The as guy likes to play. stay up late with the TV on. <laughs> 
So he ear punches plugs, you. Ear plugs. So let's get your side of the story. You're his roommate, and then we're having a great time. Things right. are going great. It's going really well. No, T- you know, you're sharing the controller on the TV. I gotta give juice. I do like the TV. I, for some reason, I, I have a hard time shutting it down without. Uh, I like the little sleep timer on there, and. But you, you know. got your own room for a while, so it kind of worked worked out a bit. Yeah, right? no, I think they're just trying to keep me away from everyone. Though. No, no. <laughs> no, it worked out fine. What were we I talking th- about before? <laughs> I, I don't know, but, but anytime you know they're talking about punting each other, yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. like that's that's it's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Right? Personal. Did you know what punting was? <laughs> I, I think it's kicked him out as his roommate. Yeah. Right. I figured, I just didn't yeah. know if that term would be used. It's more of a hockey up. talk thing, you know. Yeah. 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 I, it, for hockey players is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. We have our own code of. No, it was all with the, you know things happening, and now we're tired than ever. That's what that's what we're getting at, you know. So, but that's but you would agree with me that that it's perhaps a little bit different what Brashear did than you guys used to fight because you respect guys who fight. Like Sean Avery last year was put in the Dallas Stars dressing room, and right from the get go, Ott and and uh, I believe it was Morrow each said, "We don't want that guy here." Well, that's just a unique character right there, though. I don't think you can compare him to to most guys in the league. Uh, he obviously has his problems, but you know, like we said with Brashear, I'm sure he's been around a long time. He's a veteran guy; he'll fit in nicely. Maybe him and Brashear will be great in New York together. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you were you were okay with Sean Avery, yeah, right? Yeah, I think he's found a really good home for himself in New York. Seems to play really well there. And you found a great home in Montreal. You guys all have good homes. All contribute to your teams really well, and all contribute to the show. As we go to break, I'm kissing ass because I'm trying to push you guys hard <laughs> as well. Plus, no one has said a thing about my shirt, and I'm good with that. I think you are then passively endorsing my shirt. Blue Jays and Rays tomorrow night. That's a team that they've got a pass to make the playoffs. Both teams struggle on the weekend, Tuesday night on TSN. Shirt's terrible. (laughs) Up next with three guys who force you to keep your head up, we find out what they think about guys who don't. Is the head fair territory next?